Now you know how to use a protractor, hopefully. It's going to be better. But here's what you needed to get from this. I didn't want to just come out and tell you. I wanted to show you that this is what actually happens. <coughs> Excuse me. So the theorem that we need to fill in the blanks for, the tangent lines to a circle theorem, says a line is tangent to a circle if and only if it is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. Okay? If and only if it is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So, what that if and only if statement means is if you know one part of this to be true, then you know the other part. So, if I tell you that uh, segment or line AB is tangent to circle O, then you automatically know that there's a right angle there at angle A, or at point A, because of this theorem. Or, if I tell you that uh, line AB is perpendicular to circle O, then you know that line AB is tangent to that circle and only touches it at one point because of that right angle being formed. Okay? So if and only if statements mean you can phrase it in either direction. A line is tangent to a circle if it's perpendicular to the radius of the point of tangency, or if a line is perpendicular to, a, to the radius, then it is tangent to the circle. That's what an if and only if statement means. Okay, so let's use this. Let's use this concept. Uh, we've got a figure here. They tell us in part A that if line L is tangent to circle O at point A, as soon as we read that, we need to put a little right angle right in there at point A. As soon as you read line L is tangent to circle O at point A, you can put a little right angle in your picture. Then they tell us that the radius of the circle is 4 inches. So what, which segment is the radius? OA is the radius. So we put 4 right there. And then they tell us that AB is 3 inches. Um, AB is 3 inches. They want to know what is the length of BO. Well, what kind of figure do they have drawn in there with, in the circle? A right triangle. What can we do with the right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. Or if the two legs are three and four, what's the hypotenuse? Five. Y'all remember that. Okay. B O is five inches. Thank you guys. Because the legs are three and four in a right triangle, the hypotenuse has to be five. Okay. So let's look at this from a different perspective. Okay. Same figure. But we're not going to use what we just established in part A. We're starting totally from scratch. Part B. If AB is 5 centimeters, AO is 12 centimeters, and BO is 13 centimeters, why is it correct to conclude that line L must be tangent to the circle at point A? So we don't know that it's tangent but we're trying to prove that it's tangent. How can we prove that that's tangent? If it, if it satisfies the right triangle or Pythagorean theorem, or that's the other special triangle, 5, 12, 13, if the two legs are 5 and 12, the hypotenuse is 13, that is a right triangle. Um, so because 5, 12, 13 satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. Because it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, that must be a right triangle. So if it's a right triangle, it's perpendicular, therefore it's tangent to the circle. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what is the distance from point B to the circle? The 
Okay, using this figure right here that I have labeled 5, 12, and 13, what's the distance from point B to the circle? The closest distance. Okay, Ken, why'd you say one? Okay, they will ask you to use this a lot to move the radius and use it in different places. Okay, if I throw an extra point, say point C right here, okay, the distance from O to C, that's another radius. So that is 12. If the whole thing's 13, then the distance from uh, point B to the circle is one centimeter. That wasn't on your paper. I thought I would ask about this in first period. Um, you have to use that concept a little bit. Okay, so they do ask you to use previous stuff you've learned in other geometry concepts. Okay, there's another property about tangent lines we need to know. Um, so, they give us another figure. PA and PB are tangent to a circle uh, centered at O. So as soon as we read that, we need to put in right angles at A and B because it says that those are tangent. It says to help prove that PA is congruent to PB, auxiliary line segments OA, OB, and OP are drawn in the figure. So those dashed lines are put in there to help us figure this out. All right, so looking at this figure, we're trying to prove that those two tangent lines are congruent to each other. But before that, what do we know is congruent in this picture based on other stuff about geometry? AO and BO are congruent, right? Because they're both radii. They are both radii, so they have the same length. We also know that um, PO is congruent to itself. Kind of weird, but if we broke this into two separate triangles, right now they're uh, back to back against each other, but if we broke it into two separate triangles, we would have that same length on both sides. <coughs> so we know those right angles, we know a leg, and we know the hypotenuse. That is actually one of the conditions that's sufficient for proving triangles congruent. If it's a right triangle, hypotenuse leg is sufficient because it's just kind of a different version of side, side, side. Um, because in a right triangle, if we know the hypotenuse and the leg, do we know the, the other leg? Or can we find it? Yeah, we can, because we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So if the hypotenuse is the same in this triangle as it is in that triangle, and one of the legs is the same in this triangle as it is in the other triangle, then the second leg has to be the same. Because um, the Pythagorean theorem is only going to work one way. Um, so that is how you would prove that PA is congruent to PB. We're not actually going to go through a proof or anything like that, but that's kind of the logic there. So it brings us to our other theorem. Tangent lines from an exterior point. P is an exterior point. Okay, exterior means outside. Okay, so it is outside the circle. P is a point outside the circle. So segments drawn tangent to a circle from an exterior point are congruent. So if you know that those two segments coming from the same exterior point, if you know that they are tangent, then they are congruent to each other. They have the same measure. Okay, let's use all this information here to work out an application problem. We are going to find some measures about this satellite that is orbiting the Earth. So they tell us that a satellite is located in space at point S in its view of Earth in the plane of the equator. So picture, uh, picture a globe, I looked at a globe. But you're standing back behind it. You're the satellite. You're looking directly at the equator. The equator is at eye level. That's what this uh, scenario is talking about. 
Um, the angle between the lines of sight. So if you look at the right side of the globe and the left side of the globe, this angle up here is 50 degrees. So it's talking about this angle at S. Then they tell us that the radius of the Earth is 3,963 miles. So we can draw that from the point of tangency to the North Pole. The North Pole would be in the center, right? So that is 3,963 miles. And we can draw it to both of these. question is, what's the distance from the satellite to the horizon along the equator? That is, the length of a tangent from S to Earth's surface along the equator. So they're asking us about either of these distances, the one on the top, or they're asking for the distance of the tangent line. Okay, so uh, anybody have any ideas for what we should do? Yes, ma'am. We can't. We can't. We can't use tangent. Um, if we break this up, like the last picture had, if we split this in half, we draw a line from the satellite to the North Pole. We know these are tangent lines, so I'm going to put my right angle in there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That angle at S is bisected, so that is 25 degrees. And yes, we would use tangent because the radius is the opposite, the side we're looking for is the adjacent. So we're gonna set up our tangent ratio, the tangent of 25 degrees is equal to the opposite, 3,963 over the adjacent, what we're looking for. How do we solve that one? We divide the switch places. X is equal to 3,963 over the tangent of 25. What do we need to check before we start calculating the calculator? Check your mode, okay? I saw a few of you yesterday while I was walking around taking the benchmark, you were clearing the memory, which is fine, but every time you clear the memory, it resets this back to radian mode. You have to be in degree mode in order for this to come out right. Um, 25 radians is very different from 25 degrees. Okay, so we get that it is approximately 8,498.7 miles. Okay, so that's part A. Part B says, how high is the satellite S above Earth's surface? That is the length of a segment S to the closest point on the Earth's surface along the equator. So it's wanting this distance right here from S to the closest point. I'm going to call it like point C. Okay, how can we find that length? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Okay, find the hypotenuse and subtract the radius. Finding the hypotenuse of the triangle will give us the distance from S to the North Pole. But we don't need that whole part. This is the radius as well. We can also put it right there. So we're going to subtract that after we use the Pythagorean theorem. So, or you could use tangent, or you could use trig uh, to find that as well. Okay, so those are the two legs. Square them, add them together, take the square root. So that's the hypotenuse. That's the link from the satellite to the North Pole or the center of the Earth. But no, there's not North Pole. Um, there'd be more trig involved there. Not divide, subtract. 3,963. So it is approximately 5,413.3 miles from the Earth's surface. 